Okay, in this video we are going to troubleshoot a Whirlpool Duet uh, front-loading automatic washer um, that is getting the error E9 or F9 E1 rather. Um, that error comes up uh, whenever it's trying to drain and uh, we, we suspect it has to do with the drainage uh, but we'll go through the whole troubleshooting steps and uh, and figure out what's going on with it. So stick around if that's something that you might be interested in. Okay, here with this uh, Whirlpool Duet washer. Um, the model number is there. If we can even read it. I don't think we can even read it. It's uh, WFW9150WW01. That is the model number. Um, you can see right now it's full of water. I'm going to shut this and try to get an error code. We're going to... It's messing up. Um, I'm going to plug it back in. And here's what it's doing. It tries to drain. I'm going to put it on rinse and... Put it on rinse and drain. And that's what it's sounding like. Just sounded really gnarly and nasty, and uh, it doesn't seem like it's draining very efficiently at all. So I'm thinking that whatever the pump, the pump that drains it, and there's my drain hose, and I've already checked the drain hose itself to see that everything's okay, and it, it seems okay. And it's weird because um, if you have it in the middle of a, uh, if you actually get past this point where it drains out. And then if it actually gets to this cycle where it rinses, drains, and spins. Now, uh, at one point, it's, it rinses while it's draining. And you can hear it draining very efficiently while the rinse is happening. As long as the rinse is happening, it will drain just fine, it seems. Uh, you can hear it just gushing down the drain. It seems Everything seems fine. But then when it gets to the end of the cycle, and it wants to drain off what remains... Uh, that's when it goes into error mode, and we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see here in just a second what what it does. I mean, it's still acting like it's trying to drain, and I don't think it's I don't think anything's really coming out of the drain. I can hear just some dribbles of draining going on there. So it's dribbling drain, and that's not that's actually not sealed off. I know you're not supposed to seal these off, but it's it's not sealed with that tape. I think someone else uh, before I got here tried to do that or something with that drain, but it's not sealed. Uh, right now, I've actually turned the water off because I don't I don't want it filling back up if it accidentally does get past this cycle. I don't want it to fill up with any more water. So let's see if it drains off so we're up over about two minutes doing this and we'll just sit here until the problem happens again oh, of course I was able to find the uh, user manual online but um, as of yet I haven't found the service manual I'll look again for the service manual. It probably is somewhere online. Hopefully I don't have to buy the thing. But I'm thinking at the very least um, I'm going to have to take this thing apart and clean out uh, the, the drain. The, in, the internal drain. Uh, I think maybe it's clogged. Maybe it's just full of debris or something. It's not draining very well. Of course that doesn't make much sense if it was draining while it the rinse cycle was on so I don't know I have to see what uh, what's being done differently whenever it's just draining alone and not rinsing while draining we're up over four minutes on the video I think we started a few seconds in, so we're, we've been doing this for about three and a half minutes, probably. A 
luckily we have a drain right here on the floor right in front of this unit so and a sump pump's right there so I mean if I do have to dump this thing out to drain it I guess it won't be a huge deal which is going to be my next recourse okay Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pause one. So error nine and one. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the sheet and see. Well, let's see if we can find the service manual. It's error nine one. So we'll go to the service manual and see what that error means and I'm thinking it has something to do with the drain so let's check it out. Actually before we go to the service manual um, just to get this to stop we're gonna hit the power button the door is locked right now if you want the door to unlock um, and I know a lot of people will be like oh gosh give me let me in there uh, unplug it uh, the door will actually still be locked it won't let you in um, unless you plug it back in and you hear a little tick there and the door is actually still locked powered on the door lock LED is not on but it's still locked but if you go to if you hit this button and then you turn it off now your door will be unlocked and you can get into it um, I'm just gonna leave this open for a bit unplug it but we're going to check out error code 91 and see what that is. And if we can't find the service manual, I'm just going to take those clothes out, uh, dump all the water out right there into this drain, and uh, open her up and see what we can what we can do with okay, it. Okay, here's the user manual that I found. And it says if you're having problems uh, in, I guess this is the U.S. right here. If you're having problems or need replacement parts, there's the U.S. number. I'm going to call them, actually, uh, since I couldn't find the service manual off, right off the bat. I'm just going to call customer service, give them my error code, and see if they'll actually tell me what the error code means. And they, I'm sure they probably will at least tell me that much over the phone. Um, and they'll probably try to sell me a service call, and I'm going to say probably no thanks. So let's call them and see uh, what they say. Okay, yeah, I found here in the... Uh... This is just the regular user's manual. Um, there's my error code right there, F9E1, so that's nine beeps and one beep. And it just says generically I have a drain problem, which I already know that. Um, you know, that's kind of no help. Uh, but I called uh, customer service at the number provided uh, in this manual as well. And uh, although the guy was very helpful, um, he doesn't have... He does not have the service manuals um, that would help me out in any way. Um, let's see here. If I go to Sears, uh, searspartsdirect.com and I go to the model number, uh, you can see here it actually does give me parts breakdowns uh, at, at the very least. So I've got... I've got part, parts breakdowns for all the different um, areas of the machine. So that's better than nothing. Um, in the absence of an actual service manual, this will have to do. Here is my pump and motor parts right here. And at the very least, it does give me a breakdown of these parts. Um, it gives me where each part is located and at least kind of how it's put together and also uh, ordering information each one of these there there isn't a cheap part among any of these the the most expensive being the pump itself uh, at a whopping 125 bucks and I'm hoping that I can get away with not uh, having to order that the thing is making some noise so that tells me that it's probably not completely burnt um, interestingly here on the uh, this is the uh, where all the parts diagrams are listed and it says the top parts that people purchase for this model are the water pump number one 
Um, let's see, touch up, nut, cleaner, stacking kit. So, so yeah, that's my fear that we're going to need a water pump, but we, I won't know more until I get it torn apart. Uh, so I guess I'm going to have to dump out some water and tear this sucker apart. In the meantime, I'm going to print this, um, this diagram right here so I can have it with me um, at the very least. And I may just save this page so that I have access to all these part numbers and stuff as well. So uh, a little bit more on this later. Okay, here we are with the back off the unit. Um, here is the drum driver. Uh, the belt for that down here on the bottom uh, that's the motor that drives the the drum uh, belt down here now we see the drain is up here on the top I've actually taken uh, this is the drain cap uh, where the drain comes out and then that tube there hooks up and drains um, I'm hoping that somewhere along this line in here we've got a clog. So that would be the easiest thing, I think. It would be much better and cheaper than trying to fix the uh, the pump, which is up there, way in the front of the unit. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get that front panel off. I think i got to turn it upside down to get the front bottom panel off and take that drain out. I, I, I probably have a clog down in here. I bet you a soft or something's gotten down in here. Be my guess. But anyway, we'll check that out and see what's going on. After I get it out, we'll see. Okay, got the front bottom panel off of this, and there is a uh, there's an access port here, which is a it's like an emergency drain slash um, slash lint catcher, I guess. And uh, unscrewing this thing. We can see what the problem is. It's just full of crap. Uh, these are color catchers. Uh, you can see the box of those things in the earlier part of the video. That's these things. But they've accumulated inside there. and I'm pretty sure that the uh, pump is fine. Uh, but these color catchers are the source of the problem. And this smells rancid. Um, but I'm going to clean this out and see if we can get it to drain. But I think that, I think we might have found the culprit. There's the pump right there. At least I believe that's the pump. should be because this, here's the power wires coming into it. Uh, and it pumps, uh, feeds everything up into that. That'll be the output. This is uh, inside here. Let's see if I can what I do with my flashlight here we go this tube right here goes up into the washing machine so um, I'm I'm willing to guess there's probably some more of those things shoved up in there I'm gonna get a coat hanger in there and gently um, try not to puncture anything but gently get in there and see if I can dig any more of them out uh, before we put everything back up now you can see the shock absorbers here for the washing machine there's one over here, there's one back there. Uh, there is the motor that drives the drum. Uh, let's see. I'm not exactly sure what this piece is. Probably some kind of relays and things in there, I would imagine. Let's see. I mean, this thing really isn't that old, and it, had I not discovered this myself, I'm fairly positive that you can see all those color catchers up in there. Look at that. Look how many are just shoved in there. Um, so, yeah, I, I might um, make it a point every few months to come in here and clean those things out if she's going to continue to use them. There's, uh, there's just three screws that hold on this bottom panel, and... Uh, they're simple enough to get out. You just put a brick, or put a couple bricks under the bottom, and then it allows you access. There's just three screws, and then this thing screws off uh, fairly easily. So, uh, if you have one of these wash machines and it's not draining, you're getting an error um, F9 E1. Uh, this may be your problem. It's, as long as you can still hear the pump, 
you know, and, and in an earlier part of the video, you could still hear the pump going like it was trying to work, but just really couldn't do it. Um, so good news, the pump I don't think is burned out, but it would have if we would continued to mess with it. So I'm going to clean this out and see if it works. And I'll report right back. Okay, in addition to about 15 of those stupid shout uh, color catcher sheets, um, I found this inexplicable this inexplicable thing. I don't know if that's a crit. What is that? Please return to universal if found or call. I guess I could call that number and find out what it is. But it's a piece of something. I shudder to think where the rest of it is. Um, but it's, I mean, it's thick plastic, so that was down in there. Uh, we have about, let's see, got a dollar and 17 cents. I guess if you're really broke, you could uh, go clean out your clean out your uh, trap and your <laughs> in your washing machine and probably find some uh, money there. That might not be a bad idea. I mean, if you're ever down and out, go to the uh, go looking for some wa discarded washing machines and uh, you know start taking them apart. Get you a screwdriver and maybe you'll maybe you'll get enough money for a McDonald's or something. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not a bad idea. Um, I used to go get money under the bleachers at uh, the baseball fields. Tons of money under the bleachers if you go. Um, you'll just find it all day. Uh, probably a metal detector would be really helpful, but you get under the bleachers, everybody sits on the bleachers and all their money falls out, especially in the summertime on the baseball fields because everybody wears shorts and money just falls out of shorts. I, I used to go and clean up. I would uh, go to the baseball fields. This is a complete sidetrack to what <laughs> this video is about, but... I would go to the baseball fields, and uh, whenever there was a game or something, I would go underneath there, and I guess all the parents probably wonder what the hell I was doing, but I'd usually come out with about, you know, five or ten dollars and uh, buy a hot, couple hot dogs and some drinks and whatever for free. So, a few minutes spent under the bleachers. But this is something that I guess uh, you could do if you're desperate to come in here and clean up this little trap. Uh, but I'm, let's let's uh, get the cat back on here and fire it up and see if it's working now. Okay, we got everything back uh, closed back up. Uh, we have the water hooked back up and uh, she's plugged back in, ready to go. I've loaded all those clothes back in the thing. Uh, we're just going to put it on a normal load and start it up and let it fill up with some water. Okay, it's still filling up with water here. Uh, we'll let it put a little more in there. And this thing always kind of tumbles as it fills up with water to get the soap evenly distributed. But let's let the water at least come up to a level I can see it. While I'm waiting for that, this might be a good time to test whether or not my hoses here were put correct. Um, that one's the hot for sure now. And I think I might have hooked those backwards. Let's see, what does that say? Oh, that says, that says cold, but I need to look at the back of the unit. So I think I've got these backwards, so I'll, middle note, I'll have to swap those. Okay, we've got water in it now. So what we're gonna do is uh, stop this, stop this cycle, power it off. Okay, uh, we'll power it back on, and uh, we'll put it on like a rinse, spin, drain, and hit start, and hopefully we get a drain. It is draining. You can hear it sounding good. I don't even have to pull that up to know because uh, this thing is flopping like it's like it's never felt so good. So, yeah, cheap fix. Um, if you have one of these whirlpools, uh, looks like they're pretty easy to work on. There's there's not a whole lot to them. Um, they're fairly easy to get to all the major components. Uh, the 
emergency drain slash um, catch is down here in the front. Uh, you just have three quarter inch driver nuts uh, screws and on the bottom to take off and then that panel plops down and uh, all of your stuff is right there if you want to clean out your catch um, which I would th this unit's only about five years old maybe and it's never been cleaned um, there were a lot of those shout color catchers in there uh, these things as far as I'm concerned they might do a good job catching color but they're not very good for your washing machine I'd say um, you might want to uh, make sure that if you use these silly things that you uh, clean that catch out um, very often. And I think I'm going to do it a hell of a lot more often than every five years now that I know. So yeah, this machine's uh, good to go and hopefully this video has been somewhat enjoyable. Um, these are the stupid things I like to watch when I get on YouTube. I like to watch people fixing household items. Uh, just earlier today I was watching some guy um, he was uh, working on a vacuum cleaner that um, the same model vacuum cleaner that I had found <laughs> in uh, heavy trash the other day and uh, I was gonna put a new belt and stuff on mine and just out of curiosity I was researching the model and saw a guy he wasn't even working on his vacuum cleaner he was just demonstrating how it vacuumed it was it's a vintage uh, Eureka and uh, you know stupidest thing ever but after about the third time I watched the video I realized hey man this this guy's probably onto something so uh, anyway hopefully this video has been instructive for some enjoyable for others I know it's a bit silly to film yourself repairing a washing machine um, but the information is not out there so why not you know I've got nothing against repair guys but if you can do the job yourself um, they don't necessarily have to eat on your dime. So, uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's not really my usual fare of uh, amplifier repair and uh, guitar repair and demonstrations and that sort of thing, but uh, why not mix it up every now and then? Anyway, thanks for sticking around to the end, and uh, be sure to subscribe for more videos, uh, mostly to do with guitars and guitar amp equipment.